good morning, everyone. So, very, very interesting speakers this morning, um, which ties in nicely to uh, earlier about what John said about um, the, the myriad of funding from, from angel funding to, as John mentioned earlier, VC funding up to private equity funding. So, first of all, who are Broadlick? Broadlick is a private investment firm that invests two to 10 million in established businesses investing in innovation and growing in new markets. So why private equity backs innovation? So, quick show of hands, who in the room has heard of venture capital? That's pretty good odds. Who in the room knows of private equity? Who in the room has engaged with either private equity or venture capital? That's actually pretty good. Um, so when is a good time to engage with either venture capital or private equity? So the difference between venture capital and private equity, and again it comes back to John's point earlier of the ecosystem of funding. So there are fantastic supports here in Ireland between Enterprise Ireland um, with match funding uh, through, the, um, through their accelerator program right through to a uh, more advanced stage of, of venture capital uh, funding, who will es essentially invest in earlier stage businesses, often to proof a concept, whereas private equity is at the later stage. It will invest larger sums of money, but will also partner with you, um, given, it's, given it's taking such a, a, a stake in your business. Um, so you're thinking, when? When is a good time to engage with, with private equity? It depends on the opportunity, and it depends on your ambition. The most important thing is timing, um, because often it's, 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 it's dangerous not to seize an opportunity and not to be ready to seize an opportunity. Um, often you can find it as a defense mechanism. You, you, I mean, you think of the likes of uh, a Michael Adell or a Bill Gates. They went to the public markets to, to, to raise capital. Whereas pre that, they actually had private equity money involved to get them to the next phase, to accelerate growth, to invest in innovation and research. So why private equity? If you look at the graph, just in very simple terms, you think of the yellow line, the 5%. Reinvesting profits. What's the frugal thing to do every year? reinvest a decent proportion of your profits back into innovation, back into new products, new product development. That can get you 5% growth per year. Second option, do you go to a bank? Do you take on debt? All a bank is going to do is going to provide you debt. It's not going to be a partner. It's not going to add any value besides debt. And obviously you're paying for that debt. Now saying that, it does give you access to capital to invest in innovation research, and most importantly, to new product development, to new markets or new customers, whatever the, uh, whatever the case or the opportunity may be. That can get you 10% growth per year. And I've given this a scale over 10 years, so that's, that's essentially close on one and a half times your business. With private equity, not only are you getting capital, you're also getting a partner, someone who's aligned. So private equity joins you as a shareholder within your shareholder structure, so it's totally aligned to the company uh, reaching its goal, in particular, um, its growth strategy. So you can, but generally private equity will, will, will aim for 20% growth year on year, and that's not to beat you with a stick for 20% growth year on year, it's actually let's work together and let's work towards 20% growth year on year. That's trebling your business over 10 years, one and a half and five. So, Again, you think of you think of businesses that went to not just venture capital in the, at the at the earlier stages because venture capital essentially is a it's a riskier form of capital. It invests in startups. It invests in earlier stage businesses, often pre-revenue businesses. Now there might be some pre-revenue businesses here today, but private equity is a later stage investment where you're taking an equity stake with the business but it's often in the existing business to grow maybe new parts of the business, to the, of the business or, um, or, 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 or existing parts of the business. So Broadlake, what have we done? 
So over the last seven years, we've invested in, in seven businesses. And I'll just give you examples of, of, of three. One, um, if you look at Vita Liberata, um, I'm not wearing it today, it's a, it's a self-tan. Um, so I won't go into too much detail because it'll expose me a bit much for knowing too much about it, uh, especially self-tan and, and, and cosmetics. But the, the really interesting piece here is you think of all the large brands. You think of Estee Lauder, you think of L'Oreal. Vita Liberata. Where would you guess Vita Liberata is based? Just by the name. Italy, Paris, these are the names that come out. Vita Liberata was born out of a cow shed in Ballyclare. And that's not a joke. Ballyclare, outside of Belfast, by two entrepreneurs who engaged with a dermatologist in the UK. We got involved about three years later. Um, they were at, the, at a later stage. But the most important piece was they were looking at a new technology within self-tan, which was developing a tan which will last for two to three weeks versus your fake tan. And again, I'm showing too much information here. Um, that, 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 will, that will generally fade. But this was a small business competing against large global brands with massive deep pockets and huge investments. Whereas Visa Liberata were, were bootstrapping this business, as I'm sure uh, John, John would know lots about from, from the early days. Um, but, but, but Visa Liberata essentially invested in what is now called Fino, and they've trademarked Fino. Um, that product started in 2012, started out as 3% of revenue and only being sold in, in Ireland. Now that business has is four times the size it was three years ago, and 65% of the business is now in North America, in the US. And it's interesting that John mentioned earlier and, and showed the advertisement in particular in the US, and um, they love infomercials. A, a decent chunk of Visa Liberata's product is actually sold through QVC, which is almost an educational channel. And it, Maria mentioning the, the internet of things, um, we, we, we had a very interesting guy in last week. He was 17 years of age, and he runs his own YouTube company. So we had him in with our companies to kind of say, look, have a look at our YouTube channels, in particular Visa Liberata and Merlin, who are consumer brands, and tell us what you think. And he was, and, and Vita Brada started talking about QVC. And he was just looking at him going, what the hell is what's QVC? They are like, oh, people buy off the TV. And he was like, people buying off the TV. Couldn't get his head around it. Could not get the concept of QVC. Everything was bought off YouTube, which was, again, for me, mind-opening. He's coming in again next week for our companies to give a, a little refresher, if you want to put it that way, to see how they're getting on. Um, Merlin. Highly unsexy business, shower enclosures. So essentially, you think of you walk in, you walk into your bathroom every morning, and they like to call it a shower experience. It's the, the best part of your day, is it really? If you open the shower enclosure and you walk into your shower, have you really thought about your shower door? It's a highly unsexy business. But these guys have out innovated the market again, up against the large guys in the U.S. Kohler, and um, you'd, you'd, you'd have heard of Gebert and, 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 and Grower uh, in, in Germany. But these guys, again, because they're nimble and they invest and took on investment to invest in innovation and research to stay ahead, and actually a lot of this was driven by, and I think it's hugely important, is customer feedback is hugely important. And again, back to that point of the Internet of Things, take customer feedback from online, whether that be through Instagram, whether that be through Facebook, even Twitter. Take that customer feedback and reapply it. It's something that Merlin has really, really embraced and seen a massive uptick from. That business grows 30% on year and is the, one of the European's largest manufacturers of high-end shower enclosures. Again, uh, unsexy business, but, but, but guys that are they're just thinking two steps ahead of large incumbent competitors. 2468, a services business. Now you think, okay, services business, that essentially delivers water coolers and coffee solutions and hygiene solutions. So you walk into the bathroom and you see the little air care unit that spits the fragrance at you every so often, you're thinking, geez, better dodge that. And um, that would be 2468. But again, you think of innovation. A lot of the large guys would do this in particular. So you think of L'Oreal, you think of what Vita Liberata are doing as, like, away from the likes of L'Oreal and Estee Lauder. They're out innovating the bigger guys. So what 2468 has done, obviously it's, it's, it's got scale, 
and we've gone on an acquisition journey. So 2468 has made 10 acquisitions in the last six years. Two in particular was smaller businesses that were innovating. And essentially what you're doing is, and I love this VC world called an acqui hire, you're hiring in talent. And that's important because a lot of these businesses have legacy issues. Legacy issues being that they grip to what they know. They will always grip and stay to what they know. You've got to forget that. Um, and bring in people that will bring in new ideas. Uh, 2468 um, now produces its own coffee pots. These guys were doing it in the UK. We bought a business off Nestle three years ago called Yeda. And again, it was, it was just surfacing coffee machines. But the guys now have their own closed pod solution um, for their own brand coffee ferns. So again, you can check that out and, and, and you'll see it on our website. So really, I didn't want to bore you to tears with too much of, of growth trajectories and, and stats of private equity or venture capital because it's irrelevant. It's down to people. It's all down to people and their passion and their ambition. Um, like at, at Broad Lake in particular, we are, we are massively passionate about, about learning. It doesn't matter. But um, one thing we do a lot of is, is we push innovation. There we go. So what size is your ambition and opportunity? Uh, one thing we do is we push innovation. We push people outside their comfort zone for the right reasons. We're not balance sheet or P&L scourers, if you want to put it that way. Um, your typical private equity model is show up for a board meeting once a month, take out the stick, have you got the homework done, lads? Put the stick away. Have you got the homework done, lads? Uh, yeah. So this is more how you can actually add value along the journey. So one thing I would absolutely uh, condone is, is is driving yourselves towards Dennis Hayes of the IRDG and um, Merlin. Merlin, as you saw on the last slide, I remember the IRDG. Get a get get a huge amount out of the IRDG. But the, the main thing is getting your head out of the day to day taking it out of that and actually taking some external influence. You, you, you hear of, of, like during Maria's presentation, just about the internet of things. It's one thing we, we, we focus on massively. We run these inside days for our companies once a month. And we get someone in totally unrelated to, to any of our sectors and just open people's heads. Last year, we had Instagram in. So we had some services businesses looking at them going, Instagram, am I gonna take a picture and filter it and send it out? Like what, what, what's, where's the value at? And um, Facebook we're in. Again, same thing. But these things cannot be ignored. This is all you, these are all your customers, these are your audience. I mean, we have Conor O'Flaherty, the, the young gentleman I was talking about earlier who's coming back into us next week to talk about YouTube channels. He doesn't, he, he never, he doesn't consume any television whatsoever. And John mentioned earlier about, was it 40 million these guys were spending on, on TV advertising? irrelevant to this guy and people of that age. And I would argue irrelevant to people from 10, and I mean 10 to 20, irrelevant. You might as well be writing the check and put it somewhere else. Um, so again, private equity will obviously, um, well, typical private equity, it, it depends on, on who you're partnering with. But I come back to the point of, of partnering, and that's key. So even if you're looking at venture, whether it be venture capital, or private equity. Venture capital will often take a smaller stake and you might get a couple of VCs involved. Make sure that even if it is VC in its early stage, take on the right VC money. The most expensive money you could take on is that great, at the highest valuation possible. That's fantastic and you're a rock star, you've, you've, you've raised two million, but it could be the most expensive money and the most detrimental money you've ever taken on if they're not the right partner. I won't help you along the journey and help is key. Because you know, you think of IRDG, you think of Enterprise Ireland, you think of, as, as John mentioned earlier, Intertrade Ireland. These are all support networks. Your equity partner should do the same. So for those of you thinking of venture capital, private equity at the, at the later stage, always think partnership. Do not think I'm giving away some of my family silverware or, 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 or equity. And often equity has this dirty word, it's a dirty nuance. It's, I'm giving away equity, I don't want to give away equity. And plus, this guy's going to be sitting across the table from me. But yes, that is important to ask yourself. Because if this guy is going to sit, or a guy, lady, whoever, or a team, sitting across the way from you, are they actually going to add value? What are they going to do for you? That is important to ask yourself. Versus, great, they're going to give us money, 
and this is how we're going to spend it. And guess what? Plans change. Plans always change. You look at any of our businesses, two of them have fully pivoted, um, but for the right reasons. And it's important to be nimble, but very, very important to have a partner who is aligned along that journey at any, at any stage of the funding model. But funding model is key. And what I would say to anyone, regardless of whoever you're considering to take money off, at a very early stage, at a venture capital stage, or at a private equity stage. Do consider it, and do consider it carefully, because it makes you very nimble. Um, it allows you to pounce on opportunities, as I mentioned earlier, where often you, know, you might have the capacity to do it, but as long as you feel that you're taking on the right equity, who can partner, and who can help you. So, you know, at Broad Lake, as we said, we run Insight Mornings, um, and if anyone wants to talk to talk to me about the map, we're more than happy to do so. But it's just bringing in external experts where we, we actually have all of our companies on a 12-week Google program exclusive to Broadlink. So they get a, a, a dedicated expert. And essentially all that is is to get our companies online and mobile. Mobile in particular, that none of our companies are going to be mobile dinosaurs because it's the one pet hate of mine. Um, but, you know, even just, just stuff down to as far as drop-off rates. But... Get someone that will add value, has vision, and, and essentially who you'll actually have a bit of fun working with. And that's where I'll leave it. But um, if you want to come talk to me, great. But also I would urge you to talk to, to, to Dennis Hayes of EIRDG. Um, they've done a lot for our companies. And I would certainly, uh, certainly uh, push the work that they do. Thanks for your time.